Attending a full hearing. Preparation. The judge will have made directions that you send the court and the other person certain documents or evidence in advance of the hearing. The judge will have told each of you the date by which you must do this. If you have difficulty in doing as the judge directs, then you must contact the court immediately. The judge will make clear what is expected from you, and in most cases it will be something called a position statement. For more information on how to prepare a statement, download leaflet CB7 Guide for Separating Parents, Children and the Family Courts. Will I be able to take someone to the hearing with me? You can take someone with you to keep you company while you wait at court. This person will sometimes be referred to as a Mackenzie friend. The court may also allow your Mackenzie friend to attend the actual hearing with you to provide moral support, take notes, help with your case papers and quietly give you advice on your case. You need to ask the usher on the day to check with the judge if your Mackenzie friend can attend the hearing. If you can do this in writing before your hearing date, it will help the judge. It is important to remember that your Mackenzie friend will not be able to act as your legal representative and will not be allowed to talk directly to the judge or the other party during the hearing. Meeting with the other party's lawyer. Your case will probably have been listed for a full hearing because you have been unable to resolve all of the issues with the other party over the care of your child. As a result, the judge needs to hear your evidence to allow them to make a decision and tell you both what the arrangements will be. If the other person has used a solicitor in past hearings, they may be using a barrister to speak for them now. They are just different types of lawyers. The lawyer might come to speak to you ahead of the trial to see if there are any issues that can be decided without the judge. Don't be put off by this. Sometimes things have changed since you last came to court and you and the other person have made further agreements. Arriving at court. When you arrive at court, you have to go through a security check where you and your bags will be searched or scanned. After you have been through security, you will need to find what court you are in. There will be information on display showing what cases are in which court, called the cause list. Your case will be listed by the case number rather than by your name. Make sure you have your paperwork with you which shows your case number. If you cannot find your case, there will be staff to assist you. Go and wait outside the court where your case is listed and report to an usher. The usher ensures people going to court when they are meant to. Don't worry if you cannot find an usher, they will find you. Be prepared to wait and try to remain calm. The waiting areas can get busy. You may want to bring a snack and some water, which should be in a bottle with an unbroken seal on arrival. You should tell the usher if you leave for a few minutes, for example to go to the toilet. However, you should not leave for more than a few minutes unless the usher says you can, as the case could go ahead without you. The hearing. Courtrooms can be set out differently, but this should give you a rough idea of what to expect. This may be quite different from the court hearings talked about in the previous video. Your case could be heard by a single judge, or by a panel of judges, known as magistrates. Different types of judges are addressed in different ways. Ask the usher how you should address the judge here in your case. The judge knows that speaking in court will be difficult, but do not lose your temper or use inappropriate language. If you are unsure of anything, ask. When the hearing starts, you need to try and keep calm. Be clear, but use your own words. You do not have to try and sound like the lawyers you may have seen in TV dramas. This is not a battle with winners and losers. The judge wants to listen to the evidence to make a decision in the best interests of your child. Listen to anything the judge has to say and do not interrupt the other person when they are speaking. If you accuse the other person of something serious, then the judge will expect you to have evidence to support your accusation. You should never say anything about the other person that is not true. Depending upon your religious beliefs, you can choose to give your evidence on the holy book, appropriate to your faith, by swearing that what you say as evidence to prove your case is true. This is called taking an oath. If you prefer, you can give a promise to the court to tell the truth. This is called affirming. The usher will ask you if you want to take an oath on a particular holy book or prefer to affirm. 
When you give evidence, you give the story of your case and why you believe the judge should make a certain decision. Be prepared that the other parent or their legal representative can ask you questions about what you have said. Remember that you will get the same opportunity to ask questions of the other parent when they have finished giving their evidence. Sometimes the judge will have agreed to evidence from someone who is not a party. The judge will have directed that they file a statement and may also decide that this person is to attend the hearing. If they attend, they can be asked questions by each of the parties and also by the judge. They will only come into court to give their evidence. If you question a witness during the hearing, make sure you ask clear, answerable questions. Do not make statements. The judge is independent and cannot give legal advice. You should use a legal advisory service as early as possible. Once the judge has heard all of the evidence, they will make a decision that is sometimes called a judgment or order. Usually, you will be told what decision has been made on the same day and a written copy of the order will be posted to you a few days later. If the case has been particularly complicated, the judge may not decide straight away and you will be asked to come back to court at a later date to hear what has been decided. Once the judgment has been made, it is important that you fully understand what is expected of you and that you comply with it. If you do not understand the order, you must say so. You may not get the outcome that you wanted or expected, but you should make the court order work as it has been decided in the best interests of your child. Further information about preparing for court is available in the Advice Now Guides on advicenow.org.uk leaflet.ex370, your first time in court, what to expect, ex342, coming to a court hearing, some things you should know, appealing the judgment. If you are unhappy about the decision that has been made, you may be able to appeal. You can only appeal if you have proper legal grounds for doing so. For example, if you can show that the decision was wrong because of a serious procedural error or irregularity. You may benefit from legal advice. If you cannot afford to do this, then an advice agency such as a Citizens Advice Bureau can assist you. For more information on making an appeal, please refer to the leaflet EX340, I want to appeal. All of the forms mentioned in this video can be found at justice.gov.uk using the form finder tool or from a family or county court office.